Whoa, where'd you get that? It's time for Radio Blab with Master Mel, the radio video podcast brought to you live. Join host Melody Meyer and her special guests as they discuss personal mastery and what it takes to create a life you want in a body you love, doing work that matters. Here's your host, Master Mel. Wow, that's really special. An opening. opening. (laughs) Hey everyone, welcome. This is Melody Meyer, also known as Master Mel, and I have a special guest with me here. And for those of you uh, who are watching this, um, either on the recording or live on Blab, you can see her right there. Uh, For those of you who are listening to us today, uh, thank you so much for being here. I have with me the one, the only, Rachel Reinstra. I should have had an entrance. I should have come in. (laughs) Well, hey, how are you? Where's the applause button? You can pretend we're like on Jimmy Fallon or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you have a a little fantasy about doing any of those big talk shows, Rachel, someday? Right to the fantasy? We're going right to the fantasy part. Like, you know, might as well just make, make... Let's make this interview good real fast. You know, there's like garbage behind me. What, what is that? What have you got there in the background? Is that your laundry? Um, yeah, sure. Yep. That's what it is. Uh, no, I was I'm giving away a lot of things. Speaking of acts of love, I'm giving a lot of things away. And so I packaged them today and I'm going to be passing them out. I'm not saying everyone's going to want what I have, but. <laughs> but you're going to pretend like it's acts of love. Well, I really want to get to this 50 acts of love that you're doing. But first, yeah. I want to tell everybody a little bit about you and yeah. uh, what it is that you do with your life. And uh, so you're going to fill in a lot of holes from here. Now, right now, you are the host of um, ABC's uh, Wildlife Docs. Tell us what yeah. you do, what, what, it, what that job entails exactly, for those people who have not seen your show. It's the visual. Well, there you are. That's nice. That's a nice yeah. poster. Yeah. Yeah. The giraffe. You bit my hand off after that, but that was before. It was a before shot. <laughs> I'm kidding. It didn't. It's hard for everyone to see on radio, but that's Rachel. Oh, uh, was, yes, I was holding up a picture of the giraffe. I, I host um, a television series that's on ABC, and it's on every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. If you wake up before noon. You might catch me and some crazy animals from the place called Bush Gardens. There's over 10,000 animals there. And we focus on about three different animals a week and the animal caretakers and the vets that take care of them, which you ever think about, you know, when you go to these animal sanctuaries, you think, who takes care of all these animals, especially the wild ones? Yeah. So you get kind of behind the scenes there, do you? I've seen a few. I've seen a few. I haven't seen a whole show where I can... From I started, and I haven't. I haven't seen a whole show start to finish because I don't have you know do the TV it thing. Is. But I do. Um, I've seen pieces of it. Looks like a lot of fun, and you love animals. You are like an animal person. Yes, I am. I've That's probably been. more than, than a people person. Speaking of, yes, more probably. Hi, Oprah. I'm a people person as well. But no, I've just I've always loved animals, and I find it fascinating to share. Because I think they're smarter than than humans. I really do. And and they have so many more talents. I mean, everything from telepathy, like dolphins, they with the sonar and speak miles and miles away. And elephants as well. They speak and they can hear through their feet up to a mile away. They can communicate. Okay, so you're learning uh, all kinds of things. You're learning all kinds of things there on the show that uh, then you get to communicate with everybody else. But you love you love animals. You also I met you actually when uh, we were doing a travel show together. That was a lot of fun. You love yeah. traveling. You love, but a lot of your stuff has been with animals. Yeah, I mean, I think it was weird the transition from actually when oh. I, I hosted the show that that you cast years ago, and it was an adventure travel show. But interestingly enough, a lot of footage from that. And then footage on my own where I would just visit animal sanctuaries and I had all this footage because I like making little videos. And I ended up using that in my audition tape for, actually tape, 
when tape was around for um, Discovery when they had a worldwide search for their next Ms. Adventures. They were looking for a woman that uh, that loved travel, but also loved animals. And so everything sort of fell together. The stars aligned and I became a Ms. Adventure on Animal Planet for a year. And that kind of gave me more of a foot in the door, which which you need in this business. Kind It was kind of like my big break. I didn't break my foot. <laughs> I got in the door. So would you consider yourself more of a television host or an actress? Which would you consider yourself more to fall into? It's changed now. It's not actress. I don't think, I mean, look, when you're a host. <laughs> you also do stand-up comedy. So you do stand-up like, comedy as well. Oh, yeah. Triple threat. Triple threat. Yeah. yeah. And the way, I don't think that's what they mean by triple. Isn't that singing, dancing, and acting? But we'll, we'll go. This three things, so. Three things. Um, no, I personally, I think you have to be a really great actress to even host an infomercial because you're selling someone else's product. Like the one time I had to uh, host an infomercial for a bidet, and I thought it was for a duvet. But then I get <laughs> there and I realize I'm actually going to be on national television selling a toilet. That's <laughs> acting. That's acting. <laughs> that's the real deal. You've done a lot of infomercials. Yes, I have. I can sell things. Where is your spoof video? I was looking for it the other day. Um, oh, the therapy session. Yes, the therapy session. Did you take that off? No, it should be up there. Yeah? yeah. Is it on YouTube? Yeah. Is it on YouTube? Rachel, yeah, Rachel Reinstra, my therapy session. Yeah. Therapy. I, yeah, I pretended I was getting counseling about... Uh, not really knowing who I am anymore because I'm doing all these different commercials and I say, hi, I'm Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel. Hi, I'm, hi, I'm Nikki. Like I'm <laughs> sort of a lost sense of who I really am. And then, um, and then I cut together all the points in the infomercials where I say, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Jimmy, that's amazing. That's amazing. And, uh, I like when you say you have like um, kids. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. I basically call myself out as a complete entire fraud and liar. I think I have to take off my hair and say this isn't even real. Well, but that's that's acting. Yes, exactly. Yes. And I think I think I view myself more now as an entertainer okay. and a philanthropist. How would you combine those two words? A philanthropist? <laughs> Entertainerist? I think that's you yeah. and I think I think you should you should uh, keep that word. Can you spell it though as a question? Yeah. Well, no, we're, I can't spell a lot of words, so that's, that shouldn't be part of this. <laughs> I'm still spelling is not part of this. So you love animals. You're you're hosting an animal show, and yes. you can actually um, and don't forget that you, you're the day salesperson. That's good to know. You know yeah, and I mean, look, Titleist. I've never golfed in my life, but I could sell you the balls. <laughs> if anybody's listening to this show and they need someone to sell their bidet for them. This is the woman you want to get. If I can sell a toilet, I think, I think I can pretty much sell anything. I've done, yeah, I've done dozens of infomercials. And, but the most important thing that I'm doing now is, uh, you know, helping inspire kids and teach them about different characteristics of animals, what we can learn from animals. And I think if we can combine that with entertainment and fun, because it needs to be fun to learn. Like, kids need to enjoy the experience. Well, I know you like working, you know, or, or ha you have this show, and a lot of kids love this show. And, of course, it's a Saturday morning show, so that's great. But a lot of things you do aren't exactly kid-friendly. <laughs> you are not kid-friendly? Well, that's behind the scenes, Mel. <laughs> We're not talking about that on the air. <laughs> In the public forum. I know. Do so you sell some of the th stuff you do on your website or on your, not your website, I think your website's uh, pretty PG, but um, some of the is kid friendly. on, on uh, Facebook and so forth. Yeah. Marathon, Marathon Dad is an educator. He used to be a classroom teacher. Now he's a principal. I would, to I would get in trouble at school all the time. So if I was in school, you'd probably see me a lot in your office. Um, no, it, Really, you have to have things kid friendly. If you look at any video that I have, there's no swear words. There's no like even my stand up comedy is it, it has to be rated PG 13 at least. Because if you ever want to um, get out there on any of the shows, like the late night shows or anything, you, you have to have clean sets at least now. Maybe they'll change. I think Chelsea, Chelsea Handler is changing that up a little bit. Yeah. 
Well, I want to get to uh, your your 50 acts of love that you're working on right now. And uh, when I saw you uh, put this up online, I thought, wow, I really want to talk about this because, you know, um, you know, I'm not much, you know me personally, so you know that I'm not much into television and uh, the news and everything that kind of, in fact, I get most of my news from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But, um, but there's a lot of fear that, um, fear mongering is what I call it, where the news it wants to go for all these extreme things that are happening and, and really highlight a lot of things that are going um, on that are really terrible. And there's not a lot of balance to me in the news and uh, they kind of keep rehashing and then all the, the news, the news talk shows will like rehash and like go over things and how terrible they were and then I don't know. It just seems so, um, so awful to keep up all that fear, and but I haven't really had a solution for it. Like right. I really didn't know how to combat it except for to just ignore that part. You know, yes, I need to know what's going on and so forth. But do I really need to rehash and get everybody's opinion about it, get behind the scenes and find out how many? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. so, you decided to do something about it. So the whole uh, incident in Orlando that was just devastating to so many people in the entire state, the entire country, mm -hmm. and you decided to uh, you know, do something about it. And uh, I loved your idea. And I love your idea. And I want you to explain kind of how it came about and what it is that you're doing. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, like Marathon Dad said, sensationalizing misery is nothing new. And that's really what news is, right? It's sort of prop, prop, it's propaganda and it's just sensationalizing fear. And, you know, there's a million more good things that happen than bad things. But why, why are we so addicted to the drama? Why are we so addicted to the horrible things that happen? Because it really makes everyone feel bad. And, um, I think that when you're afraid, you can be controlled more. And that's where the advertising comes in. Because if you watch the news, obviously you don't. But I was laughing the other day watching CNN going, every commercial is for a pill that makes you feel better from watching the news. <laughs> you're completely depressed after watching the news. But take this pill. The side effects would you know, kill you or make you lose your hair, paralyze the left side of your body. But they look really happy in the commercial. Back to the acting. That that's really that's hilarious to think that you're right. Yeah. Or go eat something. You know, numb yourself out with yeah, something. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like when I when I watch television, even generally, and I can pick things I want to watch nowadays. We all can, right? So not many people watch it live anymore. But when I do watch it live, whether there's a news thing going on and I want to be up to date on everything, after about 15 minutes, I feel sick. It's kind of like you eat a, a piece of cake and it tastes really good at first, but then if you eat the whole cake, you'll you'll want to throw up. And that's physically how I feel after watching watching the news. And something like a horrendous event like Orlando or 9-11 or anything like that, it almost feeds the monster because it turns into this Coming up next on Orlando, it's all of a sudden it's a show rather than an event that reflects, you know, a society that needs a lot of healing. So I basically thought I'm tired of not being able to do anything. I, I can't change the gun laws overnight. I mean, I, there's steps I can make. I can write Congress person. I can, I can do all that, which I do. But I think ultimately we need to get out the feeling and have people watch, especially through social media, positive things, things that spread the love, things that change your um, your feeling in general about society. Because basically when you watch something like Orlando, there's just a helplessness that everybody feels. I can't do anything, so I'll just ignore it. Or I'll just ignore it. Watch really the answer like, either. The, like the idea that if we watch like the relatives of, um, of the victims and or we uh, talk to the doctor and we get like the more that we watch is somehow caring like it's some kind of substitute for our helplessness so watching is like this substitute to um, showing that we care when really we're in a way we're helping the news um, and the radio the stations you know, get ratings 
and make money off of something terrible that's happened. Yeah, I mean, look, a lot of things that happen when you're watching, you want to be educated and informed. And I have my Alexa, my little lovely robot that I can tell what to do, um, whether she plays a song for me or I just say, Alexa, give me the news update. And she gives me literally 30 second briefing from BBC, which is the world news and not so sensationalized. It still is way more focused on negative ultimately, but it, it still gives me the information without the addiction of the drama. Right. And now with the shootings that just happened this week, it's kind of, it's turned our country into once again, um, a country that's, bringing up all the fear and the hate and the anger and the stuff that's been there for years. And some of it needs to be addressed. I really think that what's happening now is that a light is shining on a lot of the dark aspects of, of our country. And it's really painful to look at, but it needs to bring up the conversation of how can we fix it with love? Because you just can't treat hate with hate. It, it, it feeds the monster. It won't work. So that's why when I saw the whole Orlando thing and I was just so like that felt physically sick, like, what can I do? And I'm so tired of not being able to do anything. I thought, but I can do something. I can do what I can do. And that's spread the love and do just one act of kindness a day for each victim that was lost. And in that way, I feel like not only am I honoring the person that was killed, but also just having people watch the little videos, if it makes them or inspires them to do good themselves, then just imagine the trickle down effect, especially with social media. And they share it with their 400 friends or their 3000 friends. And then all of a sudden, if I get one or 2% of those people doing something kind, you are making a huge difference. You think that you can't do anything, but you can. If you have more than one friend on Facebook, you can do something, you can spread love. Yeah, I'll get off my Soapbox, hold on. <laughs> well, like you say, um, we cannot we cannot fight fear with more fear and with um, with hatred and more againstness. Being against, I'm against people with guns. Or oh, really, that's like we it throws people into more againstness and more negativity. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like, what are you what are you for? They'd be like, I'm for killing people with guns. <laughs> I mean, no, but that's a different type of for. Like, what are you for? You're for change. You're for peace. You're for love. So that's more what we have to focus on because that's really the only way that change can happen is to take the parts that are wounded and, and put love on them and spread that. And it sounds very generic and Pollyanna, but it's not really because... Well, what, what are you, like... Are, are, what are you getting as far as feedback from all the things that you're doing? I mean, I know the people that you're doing uh, some kindnesses for are really appreciative and, mm -hmm. um, and so forth, but are you getting any negative feedback at all, like that you're somehow using this whole thing as uh, attention? Well, I mean, if anyone knows me, I people can say that about anything I do. <laughs> so, so that's going to be said anyway. And if I am doing this for attention, then good, good. What a great way to get attention. What a great way to get attention. And if I get attention and that upsets the person, maybe they can see through that and see the attention behind it and the love in the little small act of kindness that I do. And if that's so inspired, what are all the kinds of things you're doing? What What have you done so far? Why don't you um, share a few things that you, what you So the very, there's a really weird sound. Can you hear that? Is it feedback? Um, I got higher speed internet on it with through AT&T yesterday. I don't notice any changes. <laughs> I, nothing's downloading faster. I'm, I'm at a 12. I don't know how high it goes, but I was at a six. Money, don't you? What are you, That's what are you at with your download speed? Can you find that? You can find that out, right? You, you do, you do a speed test. I did a speed test yesterday. I was at six. So I said, add me up to 12. Let's do this. Let's go to 12. And and only goes to 11. Anyway, it's not, nothing helps. It's a scam. Nothing, nothing's faster. I'm still seeing you like this. Oh, is that right? I look like a robot? No, I mean, it's good. I like robots. I bought one. <laughs> so, 
Now I have a melody robot. Um, no, so what was the question? What, what are you doing with your, your 50 acts of kindness? What have you done so far? Um, what am I doing? So uh, the first day I wrote out positive uh, sort of affirmations, like it's gonna work out, you need to remember to trust, um, you are loved, stuff like that. And like cut it into little pieces of like, kind of like fortune cookie, yep. put them in a bag. And I went to one of the busiest coffee places in LA and I had a bag and I had people pick one and I, they're all waiting in line. So they, they couldn't leave, <laughs> even if they wanted to. They're like food or do I do this with the crazy girl? And, uh, and so they picked, they picked out, and, and each one seemed to affect them in a different way. First of all, they were so surprised I'm going up to them and giving them something. Because automatically, in our society, we think, what do you want? Are you selling something? Yeah. What's going on here? And I said, no, really, this is, I'm just really doing this for fun. And it was really cool. It was, it, it was fun for me. And it was really cool to see their expressions when they got, when they got these positive statements. And they kept them. And people aren't used to that they're not used to people just doing nice things and i think that's a sad state of our society that that's that that's not normal you know you are still suspicious yeah and then uh another day i gave uh flowers to my uber driver and i told him to pass them on to someone else and take a picture of whoever he passed them on to and so he did and i made the video and i shared it that day and he he'd given his flowers to his daughter who was like this eight-year-old adorable child and she just looks so happy so you just never know in, in that moment her getting flowers from her dad which why would a dad give the eight-year-old the flowers but that actually could change her entire life like just at that moment that she remembered him coming home and giving her flowers you just don't know how the trickle down effect happens just by doing that one act of kindness Whoa. So I've been, you know, and I've been trying to change them up. So it's not just about giving someone something, you know, like one day I, I sat down and I listened to this old guy that lives in our apartment complex and everybody ignores him. And he's kind of considered the crazy guy, crazy violin guy. And, um, he sells things on the corner and plays the violin. And I sat down and I just talked to him and I listened to him more importantly. And he wasn't, he wasn't crazy at all. He was eccentric and brilliant and in three different orchestras. And it's like amazing how we can judge somebody, especially the old guy that sells violins happens to be one of the most fascinating, intriguing people I've ever met. So that act of love was just sitting down and listening to the guy, taking the time to give someone that kind of act of love, which is just as big, if not bigger, than, than giving them something. And that's important. That's so nice. So yeah. How are you really going to come up with 50 different things to do? Well, the way I see it, I mean, what's happening every day is it just comes to me. Like, it's, I kind of let it go because if you turn it into a chore or I have to do this, 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 then it becomes not really an act of love. It's an act of obligation. <laughs> 50 acts of obligation. Now <laughs> I just let it come to me. And if you go through your entire day, and you sincerely can't think of one thing to do for somebody that you meet along your path, I think that's on you. I think yeah. you should get out of your head and not be so about yourself. But there's yeah. constantly things you can do. Like today, I I was getting a coffee and I noticed the guy in the in the parking lot who used to sit in that booth and just take tickets all day. And I thought, you know what? That that has to be a sucky job, especially with people in LA who. No one's acknowledging him even as a person, and they're frustrated with no place to park because there's too many people in the world, let alone LA. And I just, I stopped and I said, well, Can I get you coffee or a nice blend it or something? And he didn't even know how to take it. He was like, Well, for what? I said, For you, for you, for you. You know, he was like, well, No, not, not coffee, but I guess I could take a water. So I, I went and I got him a water like this. And you just would have thought it was the best thing in the world. So stuff like that, like the just acknowledging person and and kind of going out of your way. Because yeah. who knows now how how that's going to affect him later? I mean, it just you don't you don't know the amount of people that you've just helped. You think it's one person, but it's really a lot more than that. Yeah. So, um, how does this translate to you, what you do for a living? 
Well, I think it translates quite easily because I. someone once said that you know what your mission is in life. If there's something that you can't not, not do, I know it's a double negative, but think about it. If it like, no matter what you have to do this, you've always done it. And I've always made videos since the video camera came out when I was 15, I've always made fun little videos. I can't not, not do like, I can't stop. And through that, it's gotten me, it's got me work, got me the first job. It got me the misadventure things. I had all, cause I edited my tape for the final audition. So I'm just continuing to do what I love, but, but in this 50 acts of, of love, it's, it's got a different intention, but I, it's also selfish because I like doing it. Yeah. But that's your gift, Rachel. I mean, um, what, let's talk about my gifts again. <laughs> Your gift is to make people feel better. Mm. I mean, that is what you do. And you use the videos, you use your videos to, to do that. So that it well, yeah. I, I, and I like the way the response when I'm, when I post them is really, there's a, there's other people who share them. So now, you know, instead of, you know, my 4,000 friends it's now being shared, that act of love is being shared with at least another, I don't know, three or 4,000 people, but it's not just that it's, it affects them. They're enjoying it. They can't wait to look forward to something good at the end of the day, no matter what they see on the news, they can watch me doing something stupid or crazy outside the risk zone and, and they can enjoy that. So it's kind of bringing a little bit of, you know, something that's opposite of everything that's in the news to their life. And then I can have two people on my Facebook want to, do their own 50 acts of love. So one, one guy did it and he's starting, he shared, he shared the video cause he was learning how to edit and asking me how I do it. And so I was helping him and then he, he posted one up and didn't get the sound. So you don't really hear anything, <laughs> but that'll come in time. <laughs> but he gave a, a card um, to a person that he goes to, I think it's like Home Depot. And he just acknowledges how, how sweet she is to people. And so he gave her a card and you should have seen her face light up. So then he posted that and I was like, that's so cool. If I can inspire one person to start doing 50 acts of love, I wanted it to be like a mission, like everybody do it. But I think that puts pressure on people and can make them feel overwhelmed with just, just surviving. It's like, oh, I don't want to have that. In fact, I challenged, I challenged two people one time when I gave the flowers to a stranger. I challenged two people. I said, your challenge today is to give flowers to a stranger. Now, how, I mean, honestly, how hard is that? It really is not. Go to Ralph's, go to the market, get to, and give them to the cashier. That's a stranger. It's not hard, right? One, the one guy did it like that day. And he was like, oh, he kind of liked the challenge. And I kind of knew he was like that anyway. And then he shared it, which is so cool. Because the woman he gave flowers to was like, you don't know how much I needed this. So I was asking God for a sign. And so he, so he shared that. And then the other guy who I usually, we usually message each other almost every day, hasn't done it. And that, and that was like seven days ago. And he literally won't message me anymore because I think he feels so bad about the fact that he just couldn't get around to doing it. Yeah. And I was like, don't feel bad. It was kind of a fun challenge. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to push people away from feeling obligated, but I thought it would be kind of fun to challenge someone just to see if they would step up and he and he's one of those people that he lives his life giving so it's not like he has to really think about how to go out of your way but i really stumped him with the flowers thing. <laughs> actually i know that you've studied psychology mm -hmm. plus i've done that and so what, what is your what is your take on when people really cannot give something to somebody else because of their own limitations within them. What, what is your Well, I mean, I think you'd agree with, with me. I think you have to have a really strong sense of self and you have to be able to love yourself first. That's the most important act of love. And I was going to do that as the first act of love, but yeah, for an actress to talk about how much she loves herself might not be a way to start out. <laughs> I love me. My act of love is I might get a massage or Maybe do affirmations in the mirror. That's my act. Of, like, you know, that'll be number fifty. You can work up to it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm gonna work up to that one. I still think it's important though because I think that 
ultimately on a deep level, you, you have to love yourself or you don't have anything to give. You just don't. And I used to volunteer, but it used to be out of desperation instead of inspiration. And I think that you can, you can do things, anything in life can come from fear or love, but I think I was doing it out of desperation because I wanted, wanted people to like me. There's a million reasons why you volunteer, you know, you, you feel better about your, you do feel better about yourself, but it's not with the same intention. It's more of a neediness. And now when I do something, it's actually because I'm excited to, to give because I'm, I feel, I feel happy about myself and who I am. So it's, it, it's not as much of a risk. I don't worry about what people are going to think like I used to. I don't actually think I ever did, but I don't do it <laughs> at all anymore. <laughs> well, you don't uh, strike me as being too self-conscious about things like that. Right? Yeah, no, and I, get, I mean, I everybody gets self-conscious about stuff. I mean, that's, but I mean, ultimately to be able to, to give, but it doesn't mean that you have to really love, like to do something small, like small act of kindness for someone. The times that I couldn't were when I was really depressed and I just, I just had nothing in me to even, even do anything for anybody. Cause I was just so down on everything that it was really hard for me to even see other people's pain because I was so swallowed in my own drama, you know? Yeah. Whereas now I think it's a great anecdote is get out, get out of yourself and, and do something for somebody. Well, what I've noticed uh, in you over the last few years is how you take things that happen to you even if they're not you know, they're negative or some people would consider negative and you turn it around mm -hmm. um, and you have fun with it. Like what you did with uh, your food poisoning. Uh, with what? Uh, your food poisoning. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so Rachel got uh, food poisoning from recalled food uh, from Trader Joe's. And uh, it could have made her mad and she could have, you know, been picketing out in front of traders or started a petition or got online and get really nasty and stuff. But instead, what you did was you made a video and, um, and actually made a whole spoof about it and did a music video about it. It was hilarious. Which you were in. You were like, you were kind of still the show. <laughs> it's, 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 you guys, guys want to see it? It's called um, Trader Joe's Recall Music Video. It's on YouTube. Trader Joe's Recall Music Video. <laughs> we were really trying to come up with a good name that you remembered, but it was really fun. It was fun writing the song, and then it was fun recording it. And then I just saw this. I thought this would be such a funny video. It's called Throwing It All Away instead of... Um, you know, it's too Megan Trainer's song, all about that base, about that base, no trouble. And I thought to myself, since I had to throw away all my food in my fridge, I was like, well, I'm throwing it all away, all away. It's recalled. <laughs> and it was just in my head, throwing it all away. It's recalled. I thought that's, that's my really cool. song. But I mean, most pain, I mean, for comedians, and I would say like 70% of all their comedy comes from pain. I mean, they're the most miserably upset, depressed human beings on the planet. <laughs> Well, I actually took a stand-up comedy class once. It was... I remember. Oh, my gosh. It yeah. They realized. But, but the guy that was running this, this seminar, this, you know, this class I was taking, yeah. he said, okay, so tell me about, like, the worst things that have ever happened to you. Yeah. He said, that's what we're going to use. I'm like, what? <laughs> the very worst. Come on, you can do better than that. Something really, really nasty and bad. And what? I don't really want to go there. Oh right. no, but that would be funny. Yeah. For you. <laughs> no, I mean ultimately, it, when I tell you stories, the, the ones you remember, the ones you laugh at the most, are the embarrassing ones, right? Or the yeah. ones where I'm in this vulnerable predicament, and people can relate to that, you know. And then when you're upset about it, but you're able to turn it around, then they're able to because they can do it through your eyes, and then they can see it differently. So, you know, now someone gets food poisoning and they think about that video. And, yeah. you know, so it still feels like you're dying. Nothing's going to change that. <laughs> you, you weren't exactly laughing while you had it. Oh, no. I really thought I was, I thought someone poisoned my food. I thought it was, I was going to die. I, I really did. I was like, this is a, 
horrible way to go because Elvis <laughs> died on the toilet, but he had so much more of a career. And I thought, I can't die on the toilet when I host a kid's show. That's, that's no way to go out, really. <laughs> How are they going to explain that to the kid? <laughs> right. Well, she... <laughs> Just say, well, we're just going to show you the bidet infomercial she did. And <laughs> just know that she sold it and it ended up killing her. Little oh my God. No, I mean, actually, that I would have, I would have loved the bidet at that point. <laughs> Bidets are great. The best invention ever. Like, America has a just dirty asses and they don't care. A bidet like washes it. Like you wash your hands after you eat. Why wouldn't you wash your ass? I don't like that's it makes it's common sense. But but people don't. But with a bidet, I mean the Japanese have the cleanest asses in the world because they're the ones that invented it. Toto, the company Toto. Oh well actually when I was in Japan, um, they had these things that um, they didn't have to have a separate bidet. It was all in one thing. Oh, you don't want to leave. Like, it's just, it's like this. I, I could be in there for 40 minutes. Like, where do you go? Bathroom. She's blow drying. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> oh, my God. It's true. It's true. Yes. That's why it's funny, because it's true. Wait, I'm going to try to look smart. See, I should so tell us what's coming up. What's coming up on 50 Acts of Love? I should have got the non-glare. This is a bad decision. It would have been 50 bucks more. I'm mad. Uh, what's coming up? Yeah. I can tell you. You have to tune in. You have to tune in. If you loveyourwildlife.com, that's easy to remember, right? Love oh, yeah. Let, let me take that in here. What is, what's the website again? Love Your Wildlife. Love Your Wildlife. Your wildlife. I love that. That can be taken both ways, like your wildlife or your wildlife. Love your wildlife.com. And all the acts of love will be posted there. It's only they're only about a minute or two minute videos. It's not like this, you know, it's it's not a movie. It's not an epic feature. Or it's not a big it's yeah, they're really fun small videos. And um I really I don't know. Like I told you what I did today and I don't know what my act of love will be tomorrow, but I'm sure it's going to come to me. And I'm going to try to get a little more outrageous with them. I know definitely one of them is going to have something to do with traffic. traffic. I love in traffic. <laughs> what about traffic? Well, I mean, everyone's so angry. I mean, we need a new we need a new type of psychologist for the the road rage that's out there. Like, there's no pill that takes care of that, and people are really really angry on the road. And they'll say anything. You can see them yelling at you through the window. But if you were with them in the same room, they, they wouldn't dare to say anything. Well, they think they're still anonymous. Yeah, right. It's just like the computer. Like, you punch something in, and nobody cares. But if you guys were face to face in the same room, you would never say that. But no. But yeah, there, there's just a lot of road rage. And I think that making someone smile on the freeway is a big deal because then they'll take that with them the rest of their day. Because there's a lot of angry faces out there on the 405. When, is, when are you doing your next episode of... Uh, oh, I'd like that. Uh, yeah. This, this, you mean what I do for a living? Um, <laughs> we are going to film the episode August 12th. And uh, I'm very excited. It's going to be... We've never had a macaw in um, in our series. So we're going to be focusing on a macaw. Macaw! <laughs> so you've been practicing. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I'm hoping I can get it on my shoulder or something. Uh, so that's, so that's going to be coming up in the Wildlife Docs, 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays on ABC. Are you still wanting to do some um, a travel show? Or are you exclusive with Wanting to do what? Show? Are you exclusive with your show right now? Or can you do some other? We might be seeing other people. Still, I still don't think this is worth the money. I can't get, I can't, maybe I should no. hold it. I, I'm going to have to help here. you. Well, are you allowed to work with, with other studios or other programs? Yes, uh, yes, I am, actually. Um, 
I am released from exclusivity, it's called. So I can do another animal show. Um, I can do anything else. I can do, I can even do another bidet commercial if I have to. Uh, I am free to do anything. You know, I love to talk about people's dreams and um, help create like a sort of visual, visualization of what the ultimate life, and you did this before. I did, on 2020 interviewed me about right. the luckiest person ever. Right, and, and I was, you- I was her. You visualized your job for Ms. Adventure yep. and you happened to create that. So I wanna hear what the visualization is for the next one. Because I want to, I want to be able to say, yeah, she said that on my show, and now yeah, look, absolutely, so absolutely. So for the next one, I have, um, I have an ideal scene. It's called. If you went to University you know, of Santa Monica and got your master's in psychology, spiritual psychology, like Melody Meyer has, and myself, I was a valedictorian like she was, but uh, <laughs> I did graduate, and. That's really where I learned a lot of the manifestation techniques. And it's really creating an ideal scene for yourself. And you put I am right in the middle. And then you have spokes. You get to I am like it's already happy. So to manifest, I can't tell you I am going to or you're always going to be going to. So I am enjoying uh, being the host of an amazing animal show called The Wild Life Heroes. You heard it here first. Wow. The heroes of of the wild. And um, part of the reason I want to do that show is because I would like to highlight the people who are really in the field. Because when I traveled the world and compared animal and human behavior, I thought these people are living it and no one's, they'll never be acknowledged. You know, this one woman spent her life saving wombats in Australia. And she's fascinating. And, and not only will you learn about the animal, but you learn about you know, the person that's dedicating their entire existence to one animal. And a lot of these animals are on the verge of going extinct. So in a sense, it's not only, it's not only going to be entertaining, but it's going to be educational, inspirational. And at the end of every episode, you'll have a chance to give to that foundation because they might need two or $3,000 more to help educate people. And you could be saying, we could be saving the species. We only have 50% left of the wildlife in the world that we had 40 years ago. It's like 50% is gone. So I do feel like I should do something about that. So that's my mission. Um, and I can't wait because I think it's going to be a really fun, interesting show. And I think I'm going to be able to have more of my personality in the show right now. The show I'm doing right now is basically me reading a teleprompter, which is still great. Uh, and it's educating and inspiring kids. And it's teaching them about the cool things that the vets do. But I really want to get out there, you know. I want to travel, and I want to. I want to show people animals they didn't even know existed. And I really want to bring the information in a fun way. So that means that means I have to have a little more control over over the script. <laughs> so this isn't this isn't a show that's actually on the docket right now for anyone. This oh, it's on, on the docket. The, it's on the docket right here. Yeah, but it's something you want to produce that you want to uh, make happen yes. from scratch. Yes. Wow, yep. that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because when you're talking with people about, you know, the idea that you want to manifest, you'll you'll get a lot of naysayers, mostly naysayers. But, you know, I always like to say to people, so tell me what would excite you about this and how you can see it happen. And then they kind of put, put their brain in another paradigm and they have to think about, you know, the possibility, like you and I talk about possibilities rather than why it can't happen. But an important thing to do for any any show is to have a sponsor. I mean, there's two guys traveling the country right now on a show called Rock the Park. And and the reason they got the show is they went to all the national parks and they got funding from them. So it's not only educating everyone about national parks, but that's their sponsor. So, you know, I have to think about who would sponsor a wildlife program that highlights people all over the world that need money to save species that are going extinct. Karina? Karina Dogtown, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Well, there are lots of um, organizations that are about saving wildlife, aren't there? There's lots of nonprofits and so forth. That's the thing is, is there, there are a lot of nonprofits. I'm not sure how much money the, the you know, National Wildlife Association has to just, let's do a show. <laughs> they're, trying, they're trying to get money to save, save animals. So it's... Um, I'm not really sure if a nonprofit 
would have funding, but I'm going to go everywhere. I'm going to go everywhere. I'm going to knock on every door to make it happen because I think this is. I, I want to encourage you. I want to see that show. Yeah. I want to encourage you to do that. And I, I actually think that um, it's a, you know, it's a great way for a nonprofit to actually get more eyeballs. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I'm going to show. I'm going to show you something. So this is this is kind of how I got the idea. So it says, "Wildlife Heroes," right? This is a book. Yeah. That this awesome animal person, Julie Scardina and Jeff Locken, they wrote, and they feature from all over the world exactly what I'm talking about. So, okay. So who, who paid for that book? Who paid for the book? They I don't. They did some private publishing on this, and it, and it and it's got it's gotten a little traction, but she. Um, Julie Scardino, one of the authors, is committed to making this happen as well. And I think because of certain ties to SeaWorld and whatnot, there are certain uh, limitations for her to be able to go forward with it. So it's kind of like she passed the baton. And, um, you know, a really great person to, to talk to would be Jane Goodall. She's done so much. And she has such a large influence with um the Wildlife Foundation and just uh, animal lovers in general. So, I think, I think she's going to be a source that I reach out to. I think Jack Hanna. I think you know, asking, asking a couple of people who are in the industry already, how we can make this happen because this, this is really important. This isn't, this isn't just just an entertaining show for kids. This could actually make a difference and save a lot of species. Yeah. And keep me employed, Mel, which is important. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I'm always concerned about whether you're employed or not. <laughs> I know, as it should be, as it should be. No, but what I, what I love about what you do, Rachel, is that you, you do what you love to do, mm -hmm. you have fun doing it, you spread joy wherever you go, but you also have, you know, your own agenda of, um, Spreading the love like you are with your 50 acts of love mm -hmm. for, for Orlando. But, um, you know, helping animals, like what you're doing even through, you know, bush gardens of all places. Like, you're still finding a way to get your personal agenda of spreading love and to people and animals, uh, regardless of what it is you're doing. I really admire that. Like, it's, no, I don't, know, I don't know how else to live, but I would love for you to speak at my funeral. <laughs> that was really good. I add a couple more things. Well, actually, I'm recording this, so if I could just send them. Just play. We're gonna play back. Rachel requested this. Let me just add a couple more things. I would really like to go to your funeral, but I'll probably be busy. So yeah, I'll have that thing that day. Go to that thing. I'll haunt you. I'll haunt you until you die if you don't go to my funeral. If I do go before you, I'll be at the foot of your bed. Woo! That's what friends are for. Exactly. Exactly. So, what are we? Are we? This has been an hour. This is a lot for people. They can't yeah. watch my one-minute videos. Like, it takes people a lot. Yeah. Right. So let let's tell them again how they can get they can uh, follow you on lots of social media. You're on Facebook like a crazy person. Yes, I am. You you, uh, you do lots of things there. You have to you me. Me. Put my name, Rachel Rainstra. Right there, they already have that up there. Yeah, you have that. Uh, your YouTube channel is awesome. I love all your videos. Yep, I'm already getting that organized. That's, that's, you can see lots of fun little videos there, including my acts of love. Um, and then on your website, loveyourwildlife.com. What all happens there? What all happens there? It's, you know, what, what, oh, is that a blog? You know what it is? Yeah. It's a blog? Yep. Um, yeah, it has been my blog. And right now it's my blog. So the V, so I, that's where I post the acts of love one a day. I say a little bit about what you're going to see. And uh, it, it is, it's, it really is sort of like my diary at the end of the night because those are my blogs. They've turned into um, me just basically talking over what you're watching and hearing my thoughts about it while I'm going through it. So it's kind of a cool, kind of a diary format. And it's and it's just something positive to watch, which I think is important right now. I think we all need to be feeding that. We're observers, but we need to focus more on create be, being creators rather than observers. Because being an observer, you're victim to whatever you're observing to determine how you feel. But when you're a creator, then you can decide how you feel. And 
that's what I'm trying to do, create as much as possible so I can focus on that. And people just want to stay being the observer, then at least they'll have something better to observe. I want you to put out a challenge to anybody who might be listening um, or watching. So the three people are watching right now. <laughs> We're going to challenge you. <laughs> what are we? What are we going to challenge them to? Well, you know, I think that you know these this idea we've all heard it before: random acts of kindness, blah blah blah. But really, when it gets down to it, it is taking a stand for something that's much bigger and much more universal than just our, our little universe, you know? And by saying, hey, and, and having an intention around it, it really can make a big difference. Right. And, and not out of obligation, but more like sometimes we do need to get out of our comfort zone to be able to, um, and not care about what other people think of us, so that we can actually say, you know, put that energy out there. It's like, you know what? This is my small way of saying I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> yes. That whole idea of I, I'm going to have a temper tantrum. I'm going to say my opinion about what we should do to these people or those people or with guns or with whatever. It's like, what about you get what you're against, got it. Now what are you for and how are you demonstrating it? Yeah. Because most of it is just blah, blah, blah. And, and I've had to remind anytime I post something on Facebook that has any controversy at all, the people who are, it's almost like they're waiting for the, waiting for the fight, you know, Oh, he didn't kill him or, you know, he, that's a dangerous thing. He had to kill him or whatever it is. And it's like, wow, I didn't mean to start this. Uh, so it's, it's also, it's also, you know, take responsibility over what you post as well. When you do post anything, think about it before you do it. And is it going to create division or is it going to create unification? Is it going to create people going, I'm on this side and you're on this side. So they can go back and forth on your one thread. And then you go back to your Facebook and see that there's like 10 pages of just two people fighting, which has happened before. Or, you know, or are you posting something that, you know, you're excited about and, and that's spreading love? You know, it really comes down to just one small little thing. It, and it's not, it's not just a small thing. Like yesterday I posted that, I just noticed there's a lot of hummingbirds right on my patio. I could show you in my other computer, but, um, and I went out and got a, a bird feeder and I filled it with you know, the sugar in the water and then put it out there and I watched them come to it. And then I, um, I realized that that's, gosh, that's helping. That's helping all, it's helping those four, but then they're magical creatures, and just doing that small thing for them is it's, it's a large act. It's, it's actually not, nothing's really small if it comes from love. And love grows. Yeah. So instead of trying to see what what our impact is immediate, you just have to trust that whatever positive energy you put out there, it does grow. Just because you don't see where it grows doesn't mean it's not. It's true. It's true. And someone got upset because I one of my random acts that I, I gave, and I gave something to a someone walking by, and it was this cute little stuffed tortoise, and with a little message that says, "With patience, um, you know everything will happen. Just trust." And I gave it to this woman. I didn't know who I was going to give it to. I just gave it to this woman, and she like grabbed it and just kept you know, walking, you know, hurrying to work. And that was her reaction. And people were, there was a few people who were upset because they wanted to see the feel good video where the person's like, oh, I don't think you, you know, and I said, yeah. you don't, you don't always get to see that. We don't know that, you know, ironically, it's, it was given to someone in a hurry and it was about patience. We don't know when she gets home, what, what she's going to think. And she probably was thinking it was like a Jehovah's Witness thing where I was trying to sell something to her. But, <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't always get to see that. Yeah, let's continue to spread the love. Rachel, thank you so much yes. for being with me here today. And thank you, everyone who's been listening. We want to challenge you to go out there and spread love to. Uh, if you need to watch the news, do it. But then you've got more love to spread. Yeah. Hey, how about this? If you go to Starbucks, buy the person behind you coffee. It's that simple. Oh. There we go. Thanks, everyone. Thanks Bye. for being with me we'll again with more Radio Blab with Master Mel. Take care. I-E-S-B-E-C-T, find out what it means to me, I-E-S-B-E-C-T.
Thanks for listening to Radio Blab with Master Mel. Live each week, Melody Meyer empowers you to become a black belt in your business and life every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern or anytime 24-7 on RadioStarWorldwide.com. Radio